So Interstellar has hit the screens and I know probably every YouTuber is YouTuber. <laughs> what was that? I have no idea where my accent went then, but anyway, all the YouTubers are probably reviewing all the Christopher Nolan films, so apologies if you are tired of seeing this, but I just couldn't resist. I couldn't resist sticking on The Prestige the other night because it is one of my favourite films. So we open to lots of top hats on the ground with this just incredibly intriguing dialogue of are you watching closely? It really draws you in, you know, it's it's as though Christopher Nolan has gone, just come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. I want to tell you a story. And it's like, yes, tell me a story. I'm really intrigued right now. <laughs> So all like the dialogue, the music, the imagery right from the beginning draws you in on this journey and what's just fabulous about it is just like I said with the dialogue, imagery and music on top of that we have the rivalry of these two magicians wanting to succeed and it's incredibly intense. You really do follow this story just going what's going to happen? You know, you really do think about these two men and where their fate is going, you know, it's it's a wonderful theme, obsession. You, you really get dragged in, uh, you know, just this conclusion that your own ambition can be your downfall, I think is a fantastic theme. So, and what's beautiful is Nolan just tells the story beautifully and uh, he does, he sucks you in, he he just grabs you and he's like, yeah, I've got you now. <laughs> and it's beautiful that he really sucks you into that period of time, you know, with the, the costumes and it's dark, it's gritty, it's moody. Uh, it's, so he really just suck you into that time and also the editing is excellent. The structure of the film is very uh, back and forth with flashbacks and you know uh, now we're back to current day and every single scene is perfect. It's edited to a T which just makes the pacing of the film just fantastic. So the beauty of this film being great storytelling means every time you watch this film it gets better. Oh like every time I watch this film I must have seen it like million times by now but every time I just find something new and I realise how clever bits are and, and you find something new to capture and on that every moment you're just like oh you clever bugger you because <laughs> obviously when you watch it the first time you will miss almost everything that goes on in this film and then you'll watch it again and you're like oh my god why did I not get that it's just you know so obvious and um that's the beauty of this film. So let's talk about the performances. You have Hugh Jackman, who I love and adore. <laughs> he just oozes showmanship in this film. He is a great choice to be the performer magician. And then you have, on the other scale, we have our other lead, Christian Bale, who just excels at brooding and controlling his temper and being the just moody magician of the two. And then we have Michael Caine, who is playing the usual old wise man act. <laughs> but it's really something special. I know that he does this in every Christopher Nolan film, but it never gets old. Because Michael Caine just adds depth to a film and you really listen to him and everything he says, you're just like, yes you're so wise and you just kind of think I wish I had an old wise man like you in my life to just come in and be like <laughs> and reel off a poem or reel off a philosophical proverb thing <laughs> it's just wonderful and then going on to the girls we have Scarlett Johansson who in all honesty, it doesn't have her usual sparkle in this film and I can only say it's probably due to the fact that she's overshadowed by Rebecca Hall who fits the 
era of this film beautifully. She just she just has that look about her and her scenes are just fantastic. She really does um, act well against Christian Bale and I think she really does sort of outshine that. But the great character actor Andy Serkis who is in a supporting role and he he is, he's a fantastic character actor. Every character he does I just I'm just in awe of him and it, I just wish he'd do more human roles. <laughs> Stop it with the monkeys, be yourself on screen because you're just, you are a fab fabulous actor and I, I hope to see him do more character kind of pieces and even as he gets older just to do, just, you know, not a character, 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 <laughs> You know, these quirky, bizarre characters, move away from that and even just do uh, just like a normal straight man role because he really is uh, an incredible actor. And I think the fact that all of his, uh, you know, uh, motion capture stuff really can overshadow that sometimes. And then we have the really bizarre casting of David Bowie as Tesla. It really is one of those bizarre moments when he walks on screen and you're just like, okay, uh, I'm going to go with this. It really does make no sense at all, but it really does kind of work. <laughs> Besides the fact that I kind of think he's going to burst into a song any second, uh, it's one of those moments where you're just like, yeah, this is weird, but I'm going to go with it because I'm quite enjoying it. I think the beauty of Christopher Nolan films is that he will make you watch a film and you will still be thinking about it later on. I think he really manages to capture the audience with that. Uh, so this is what I love about this film is uh, you will watch it and you will think about it afterwards and then you can come back to it again, watch it again and be like, oh my god, I've just found new things in this film that I didn't see last time. And it's just wonderful that a film can evoke such conversation and emotions. <laughs> 